I uh, typed in, you know, the next uh, Nick Heroes match. He make this huge sex noise. I was getting death threats. I was getting all these weird messages. I was getting people calling me, like saying nothing and just like, breathing on the phone. I was just getting destroyed in the media. One of the greatest things that I actually tried when I went off social media for 10 months was called a dopamine detox. It completely changed everything for me. You'll be amazed at how much your attention span increases. We'd be anywhere in, literally anywhere in Australia. And people were like, come into my restaurant, eat for free. Here's some free shot. People just throwing free stuff at him. No, you're not even asking for it. Genuinely, because they love him they love his content they just want to see him be friends with him connect with him and i saw that with him and it, i thought it was crazy welcome back to another episode of locker room chat where we have conversations to help you win in the game of life just before we get started on the episode i just want to clarify what we mean by the game of life so everyone's on the same page right if you think about any sport if you play nba afl rugby league, any of these sports, you have a set time and schedule when you have to perform, right? You have a set season, set days. Whereas in the game of life, game day shows up unannounced. And what I mean by game day is a breakthrough opportunity that could completely change the trajectory of your life. So whether it's a new business opportunity, uh, networking opportunity, you meet someone of high caliber um, and they could have a high net worth individual who can network with, could be an athletic performance, any of these things where you have to be preparing behind the scenes to, uh, to be prepared. So that's what we do in the locker room. Where we're making sure people are prepared for game day, whatever that is. And the difference between the people who win on game day, who get lucky, and those who let these opportunities fall through the cracks are the ones who... I've been doing the prep behind the scenes and that's what we do here. We're here to pass knowledge, pass wisdom, pass information so that whatever your game day is, you can smash it. Wow. You meet so that's kind of a... You meet, <laughs> meet all those people in the locker room. i got to come to... Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are, that's what, what, what we do here. What is the locker room? Yeah, I want to be involved. I want to come to your locker room, bro. Is there an Welcome. ethnicity that's needed or just anyone? Anyone. Okay. We don't, we don't discriminate. <laughs> no, nah, we don't. Well, that's but yeah, I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page and knows what we're talking about. And mm. 100%, it's yeah. About that's how uh, it's about how... <laughs> Talking to the mic. Anyways, cool. So today's episode is all about the topic of social media. I think it's a topic that's very relevant into all of our lives, no matter where you're from, no matter what your cultural background is, what country you live in, what skin color you have. Uh, I think we all, uh, you know, utilize social media in one way or another, and it is a part of all of our lives. So we're going to be sharing a lot of topics about that subject today, ranging from the good, but also the bad, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, exactly. So. To kick things off, I believe that, uh, you know, there are a few things that we want to help you guys with in relation to social media. I think that it's, you know, something that has only come into the public eye and become so prevalent in the last 10 to 20 years. And I myself, you know, I do it full time for a living now. Do you? We all have uh, jobs in social media, you could say, all of us. Uh, oh. I do content creation full time. Bailey, you do. What kind of content do you do? We'll get there, we'll get there. Do you use a couch? No, I don't actually. <laughs> Only for some videos. Yeah. Uh, digital marketing. So I help businesses grow online. So yeah, it's changed my life. And Chris? Well, me, me and my girlfriend, we actually make content together. Oh yeah, um, I'll type. Ah. <laughs> and Where's <it's> your link? <laughs> well, actually, I, I can put my link in uh, after for the video, ah, cool. if you like, guys. Um, but it's not what you think. You do funny comedic skits with your girlfriend. It's porn. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That wasn't what I was thinking, actually. I was thinking some nice, no, wholesome, no, lovely it videos. Is, it is actually very wholesome. We do a um, couple comedy videos. Um, basically, relatable stuff that people can relate to. I think that's, um, I guess, the niche we found, which has worked for us. Um, and people kind of uh, resonate well with it because it's very relatable. Everyone at some point in their life has had a partner or has had a girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever it is and has had some funny situations that they, they've had in their in their relationship and they all, I guess, um, have similarities within one another. So that's why our videos do quite well. That's what we do. Um, and yeah, it's been a fun ride. I, I quite enjoy it. I, I try to post every single day for the last three years now, which wow. is... Which is which has been that's a big um, achievement. Yeah, it's been it's been tough, um, but it's one of those things I said from day one. Like, if I'm gonna really try to take this seriously and try to actually succeed with it, I have to be consistent. I guess that's that's like anything in life, any job, anything you do. Like, just because people see social media doesn't mean you don't have to put in the time and the effort. I guess 
Otherwise, everyone would do it. Everyone would be a mm. famous celebrity or whatever it is, an influencer. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying I'm there yet. I don't think I'm anything special, but I'm, I'm on my climb. I think I've seen some success and I, I'm, I hopefully can keep growing, keep making people happy, keep um, aligning with other people. Um, but yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it and uh, my girlfriend enjoys it too. So it's something cute we do together. That's what we 100%. do. 100%. We're well, yeah, jumping straight into it. I think on this episode, what we want to do is give you guys as much value as we can. So we're going to try and find a balance between giving you practical ways on, I think these guys have a lot of wisdom on how you can scale, grow, grow an audience, even if you're a business, um, ways how you can use social media as a powerful tool. And then on the flip side, some ways, you know, if you're not, if you haven't figured out a way to monetize, use it as a business tool to grow an audience and you're just sort of like doom scrolling, which a lot of people do. What's do. that? What's that doom scrolling? You know, like you sort of get scrolling. Yeah, you get stuck in the vortex, and you're not actually using it productively. You're oh. just sort of stuck so with that short-term dopamine here. Then so uh, scrolling, you're just scrolling like for hours. Essentially, what no everyone value. does for at least three hours. Like a day. three hours later, you end up exactly, on like exactly. rabbit videos. And we're <laughs> hoping they land on our videos. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> so it actually benefits us. No, no, we're hoping they it. choose our videos. Not choose, not yeah. Not they random. type in our name and the username. They go to the effort of actually going to our channel instead of stumbling across them, right? Exactly. So we kind of want to touch on both. We want yes. to touch on both, provide value on how to grow your audience. And then also if you're just stuck on it, doom scrolling, how you can sort of break away from the noise and become more productive. So yeah, that's kind of what we want to touch on both sides. Uh, let's jump straight into it. Jamie, I think give us your perspective, at least on social media, how you sort of got into it. And yeah, you've done like just kind of okay. <laughs> I would say. You kind of been one of the first scratch the surface. I've done all right. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, keep going. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, I can keep going. Add to ego, you know. <laughs> yeah, my, so my, 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 my head's so big and handsome and, and very. That's what I was very, waiting very for. Tall. So I'm glad you guys said that. Um, Thank you. Now, nah, so yeah, I basically started social media in 2014 uh, when it was very, very new, especially in Australia. Um, I was inspired by a few YouTubers I saw, and yeah, it was something that I wanted to do. Um, back then, I was uh, very involved uh, in watching prank videos online and it was something that I really found inspiration out of and wanted to sort of replicate in my own way. So was yeah, there, this was- Was there any, anyone, sorry, anyone specific that you had I seen? was I was inspired by like the Janoskians, Adrian Van Oyen, guy called That's So Nathan, Vitaly, you actually, Fuzi met, you actually met a few of those, right? Yeah. I have now, yeah, actually. That's cool. That is really cool, yeah. The Janoskians were OG. They were I remember OG, their man. prank videos, yeah. the Crazy. milk- the milk, the milk yeah, exactly. thing. yeah, with Teddy, with Teddy, Teddy yeah, yeah, he's actually re-emerged, hasn't he? He has, but um, awesome. yeah, I think that like, especially seeing like how big the Janoskians got and how much they actually established themselves in the global market inspired me, uh, as a fellow Australian, that I could sort of you know do something you know similar or in social media that would be rewarding. So yeah, I started back then, and um, it was an interesting first two years because this this um, time frame from 2014 to 2016 was when Instagram only allowed photos. It was when Facebook yeah. only allowed statuses and photos. There was no TikTok. YouTube was a thing, but like no one knew what it was. And in Australia, like there was hardly like anyone doing social media. So when I told my dad and my mom that I actually wanted to do this like Jesus, as a career, <laughs> they were both like, what do you want about? Like my dad destroyed me over the phone. Like he was having like a, uh, he gave me like a two hour lecture. Did he um, say anything specific? Uh, pretty much what you said. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he just rages at me pretty much. Can you show us what it sounded like? He was like... In his accent. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Jamie, you will ruin your life. <laughs> it's, it's like, no, that's so it's accurate. It's like he's in the room. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's like I was his son or something. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I did that. And um, just giving you guys a quick summary. I was on YouTube for two years. Nothing really happened. You know, I had a few videos that kind of hit a little bit of a market and then, yeah, progressed through, uh, throughout the years into more pranks than family, uh, did some music, interviews, um, delved into the world of... Check out his music. <laughs> check out music. Well, I, found, I found his music today. I never <laughs> even knew it existed. It's, it's his ringtone. Oh my but did gosh. You, but the question is, did you like it? Yeah. How good is his music right. though? No, nah, it was actually decent. I was pleasantly surprised. Take it that. Yeah? Take it like that. Okay. Did you watch it to the end? Uh, sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you nah, did, it actually you was did. good. It was good. I got a glimpse of... We used yeah. to have it like in our car like every day. We used to play it yeah, oh, we there you go. as we were driving together. Yeah. My he's, own song. He's actually played it to girls when he's picked them up. Is that and, his And riz? he had pretended like it wasn't him. 
<laughs> and he's like, how good is this song? And if they like say yes, guy? it's good. Then I say it's he me. He says it's him, but if they say it's not, <laughs> it's like, nah, nah, change yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's how he used to program. Bro, that's genius. Yeah. Back in the day, you know. He turns it off, but he keeps singing. <laughs> All right. So what, uh, Chris, what about you? How did you sort of get into the social media side, side of things? Did Jamie sort of push you into it? What was your spark moment to be like, hang on a second, there's something on here. What, what sort of inspired you to sort of take this seriously and start posting? Because you have grown a lot, like, especially recently. Like, you have a s- significant following, especially, you know, TikTok's probably been a big booster. Yeah, mm-hmm. what was the inspiration and what was sort of the spark that took off? I've always been interested in social media. I think, uh, I guess, every young person in this generation, as we mentioned before, has somehow been influenced by social media. Um, I, I, was, I was one of the initial, like... Um, Ziz fanboys like this is back in the day before it re-emerged he was like one of the original influencers I, I would say um this is back in the day and so it got me into gym it got me into like liking content I I did drama in school uh, I wanted to be an actor that was always my dream um but I kind of um I guess I lost my flair and then that's where Jamie came in I saw one of my good mates um absolutely crushing it and he was so he was so um inspiring and helpful and 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 he kind of was like why don't you just try it like he was, he was always just pushing me to like who cares like i was i was like everything like you know you find excuses you you're always trying to say it's not gonna work for me it's like whatever and i'm, I'm not gonna lie it, it didn't work for a long time like only recently i've i've found I would say somewhat success. I don't even think I'm anywhere special, but I feel like I've had some success. Yeah, just for context for the viewers as well. I mean, like back in, you know, I think it was like the 2017 days when you were, you know, doing social media uh, as well as, as myself, you were more focusing on like the gym content, the Bro. fitness content, because that's that's <laughs> obviously an area that you naturally are, you know, gifted mm, in essentially. So it was a natural progression for you to, you know, go into that field, which you already knew about 100%. essentially as well. So, I, I think like I think that was holed. like I was like pigeonholed into that because yeah that was my whole life I've 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 been training for over you know twelve thirteen years um, I work in a gym I'm a pe- personal trainer um, I love training I love it all so I was like all right that makes sense it's going to support my business I got to make fitness content but it didn't really fulfill me I'm I'm if anyone knows me I'm quite a fun out there eccentric kind of guy um, and. I guess the gym content for me at that time was very like serious. It was like, you have to show how, how well you can do something and how clean cut everything is and it has to be perfect. And it was, I couldn't show him really my personality personality. Um, and I do actually uh, vividly remember um, Jamie used to actually ask me to be in his videos quite a bit at the time. And I'd always say, nah, nah, like what am I going to do in it? Like, it's not for me. Like I'm shy. Like, anyway, long story short, he convinced me once to do a video and I fucking loved it. <laughs> So to swear, but I loved it. Like yeah. I was like adrenaline rush. Like we watched the edit because obviously it's it's shit until you edit it. Yeah, <laughs> and then we edited it, and I was like, "This is a movie. Like this is hectic." And I think that re- ignited the flare, mm. but it largely because of Jamie like pushing me and, and motivating me, um, and telling me like, "Just try it." Anyway, long story short, I had um I found my girl, my beautiful girlfriend, and I didn't want to post about her for a while. Because I was like, you know, why is that? Keep it under wraps. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I would do that, but I was I was legit. Like I didn't, I wasn't to like try to talk to other girls. I'd still put her in all my photos, like the side of her hair, but I wouldn't tag her or whatever. So I was, girls, I've got a girl, but I don't want everyone. And they call to that like the the soft launch. Soft launch. Mm, <laughs> yes. And then I was like, you know what? I was like, I know all about that. <laughs> I was doing like heaps of trends and stuff, and it was like, you know, you get some views here and there. And then I was like, look, my girlfriend's hot. I've got all these ideas. I'm not terrible looking i could do something here and i'm funny i got all these ideas anyway we started the first video it went viral i'm like all right every single day i'm coming up with ideas i'm always researching i'm always on the app trying to figure out things and um sorry to ramble a little bit but that's essentially how it happened but largely because of jamie i'd say like a big point was having a friend there and not everyone has that not everyone has someone in their in their life that's so close to them that has all this experience Mm. that can show them all these nuggets He, he would like if I was going to start YouTube, he's like, I'm going to, sh- I'm going to fast track you to YouTube. He's like, I'm not going to let you waste six months to, to a year on the stuff that most people waste time on. Cause there's a lot of teething issues. There's a lot mm. of things that you waste time on. Jamie's like, if you want to start YouTube tomorrow, I'm going to get you there, you know, six months earlier. I'm going to teach you how to do thumbnails to make them catchy. 
clickbait, how to what what to write in your titles, how to how to do your cuts, like all these little things that are like, you know, anyone in the social media world knows, but someone new doesn't know these things. So he definitely did help me learn all these tricks, which I'm sure he will elaborate <coughs> on. I want to I want to say two things about that. Firstly, thank you. Secondly, <laughs> he paid me before. <laughs> he gave me a few things <laughs> yeah, like to say some good things. I, yeah, I need <laughs> to feel good. The first thing wasn't thank you, by the way. There's now three things. First thing, thank you. Second thing is um, I actually remember when you started being involved in my videos and you were going through this kind of like phase where, you know, you obviously enjoyed the content that we used to do together, but you were kind of like stuck in this almost like persona of being a fitness guy and a gym guy. And back then it was such a thing where, you know, in the fitness industry, it was deemed as so serious and you kind of had to play 100%. this part. So I think even for myself, you know, being involved in the gym back then, I think I could see it. It was like rampant. And I remember you, Chris, like, I remember like the first couple of videos we did, you didn't know like how to act and how to be yourself essentially. Yeah, I still don't know how to because, like, <laughs> But no, no, act as in like, you didn't know how to act as yourself. Yeah. Because in social media, there's such a difference between you can acting on social media versus acting as a character, say for a film or a movie. Because in social media, it's so largely dependent on your natural personality. And I remember you went through like, it could have been like years you went through making sure you didn't smile on camera. Like you always had to have this yeah, like staunch face. Jamie would like be like, smile, bro. Like it's not that. And deep. I go to you, yeah. <laughs> like, and I go to you, bro. I like smile. the reason I'm friends with you is because we have fun. Like you're a yeah. fun person. But yeah. like you were kind of stuck in that, like you have to play this character. Yeah, what? But I'm so, not even so, like so, that so, ever. So, like anyone who knows exactly. me, I'm not staunch at all. So that that's one thing I want to say. And like, I remember seeing that, but now I, you know, I obviously see like five years down the track, how far you've come, especially with, the videos you're doing with Hannah, which is like so amazing and you've obviously deserved the success you've had. But secondly, you know, I do want to touch on the fact that for me personally in social media, as much as I did experience, you know, a, a fairly good run over the last 10 years, I couldn't have done it without having a, a best friend like Chris that motivated me 24 seven, that pushed me, that I told him, me I that- him back. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that told me that like, you know, no matter how much hate you're getting and some of the things I did were very out there. <laughs> yeah but to keep going and not care what those people thought. And I just remember like so many times, you know, I'd be at the gym and I'd sort of be down about something or even like not even related to social media, but like maybe like about like a breakup or something or some personal issue. But, you know, Chris was was always there for me. So as much as, you know, I helped you, I you also helped me as well. Like we couldn't have done it without yeah. each other essentially. So yeah, it was a good good dynamic. So a bit of context. Bailey's actually really interesting because he's got the <laughs> he's got the behind the scenes guys. I'll come at it from a completely different completely angle. different. He's not even though he's very good looking, um, <laughs> he's actually not a model and he's not a massive influencer. He's been behind the camera, but now he's in front of it finally where he belongs. Yeah. No, I don't on the couch. I sort of I've been always <laughs> around like so many of my mates have been big on social media and that. But it Do never you name <laughs> drop some or no no no. They know who they are. Did and, he, um, didn't the, you say the, you the viewers a, don't. But didn't you say you were at a Chris Brown party or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah what was that we'll, we will get to that. But what the perspective I want to come up, come across at is, I've been on the other side of it from more the business side. So I've been fortunate enough to kickstart my career in digital marketing at a time when literally the most powerful social force that probably the world has ever seen was birthed. Right with the Facebook ad era, the advertising era, and I've seen literally people's lives transform. Millionaires. I probably spent. Easy 10 mil on, on advertising. So You did? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> out, of, out of your not, own, not out of my your own pocket. pocket. Oh, nah. Big dog. <laughs> a little tip. Is a this little, your house? A little secret tip for everyone out there. <laughs> learn with other people's money if you can. It's oh. it's the quickest way to sort of learn. So that, I've come at it, at it from a completely different angle. These guys have sort of experienced the, the content side of things, whereas I've seen people's lives completely transformed for the amount of money they can make with these social tools. And realistically... Like the social media scene has changed millions of people's lives. People's careers are built off it now. These guys, you can make so much money off it. So I've sort of seen the the business side. So yeah, it's a completely different perspective, but the potential that's out there for people, I mean, and everyone's sort of caught onto it now, but I was sort of in the early Facebook ad days when, you know, you could literally 10X someone's money easily like it was the most powerful tool i'd ever seen mm. um all right so sorry to interrupt i'm yeah. i'm launching a product soon yeah what would three tips be for me as a friend as a as a person who's part of the locker room yeah what are some things you've learned over the last few, i guess how many years like surely you've got some nuggets sure. 100%. <laughs> <those> nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> like, surely you've got some things you've gems that you, that you can share with us yeah. that you know that would help us 100 percent. so the first thing i would say is adding value 
whether you're a content creator, whether you're a business, whether you're trying to make money, whether you're in sales, everything comes from adding value first. And I believe that if you sincerely put the customer first, and this is what I noticed with Facebook ads, if you're solving a genuine problem in the market, uh, you're genuinely meeting someone's needs, then it's pretty straightforward from there. All the creative, all the assets you put out are sort of, it's, it's super easy to scale from there. The other thing is like, figure out a way to, I don't want to get too technical, but if you can reverse engineer a way where you can acquire a customer for the, the same amount of money that you're investing in advertising at the same cost, you pretty much have created an infinity loop of revenue basically. So if you're a business owner out there and you can rework your numbers to figure out that you can acquire a customer for say $30 and you can figure out you can reinvest that $30 back into advertising. If you have someone who knows what they're doing, you've pretty much got a money printing machine. And literally, we're gonna have to have a chat after this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I might, I might it's, been, it's changed millions yeah. of people's lives. That's why there's so many people out there going on and on about Facebook ads, Google ads, because you can literally, if you get the numbers right, is it still relevant? Though? Print money. Do you still it's nowhere near as powerful as what it was when it first. So, so, it. so you've Insane. seen a you've seen a massive change uh, from you know back in that era versus 100%. now. Hundred percent. It's like it's like same with influencers. Like the early people who got into influencer marketing early. Mm. Their, their business is absolutely boomed it's it's mm. another another mm. principle it's like a first to market uh benefit like if 100%. you get into it early okay. influencer marketing isn't as powerful as it was whilst it's still the driving force yeah. for most businesses it's just all eyeballs if you can get eyeballs and you can figure out a way to monetize something calculate it reverse engineer the numbers so that you're so where is it now would you say it's 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 still like predominantly selling on facebook or you think tiktok's now kind of overtaken in all all fronts nah meta's still most powerful if you're sort of trying to start a business Meta or for now is definitely the best place to go. Google, TikTok, it's kind of, you kind of just have to expand your channels where you're at. If, if there was a business out there that was uh, planning to launch a product or a service and didn't know how to do it, mm -hmm. what do you think the first, most three pivotal steps would be for them to get started? DM so, me. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <that's> <laughs> solve a problem uh, is, 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 is universal. I think yeah, that's of amazing. Course. But like, what's like the most market. three simple steps that you can give someone right now if they're watching this video? Focus on adding value, focus on the product and the marketing will sell itself. Obviously, creating the con content is a big side of it. But if you get those two pillars right, then marketing becomes so much easier. Think about it. If you're, if you're selling someone that no one wants, it doesn't matter how good I am at a, as a marketer, how much you work the back end, what content you create. If, so, if someone doesn't want what you're giving, it's dead. So if you get those bits right, then if you get the marketing side of things right, you've literally got a money printing machine. So mm. uh, if that makes sense. Interesting. Something that, that um, sort of like, um, you know, resonated with me was when you said first to mark, and that's a big thing, you know. Mm. I think from my end, I saw a similar thing happen um, when... You've done that every single time. What? First to market with all, Pretty your, much. all the platforms. I was very fortunate, yeah. But especially what you said about Facebook back in the day, how powerful of a tool it, of a tool it was. Because back in uh, like the 2016 days, you could literally have someone with a million followers share your video and you would get a million views. I remember How that crazy Fortify is that? And we, d we used to do something called um, uh, uh, like a sort of like a video collaboration with a creator called Fortify. He's still out there right now. Um, he's and killed it. He's killed it, yeah. And he had a game called Color Switch, right? And what he used to do was he already had this massive Facebook it's page with 2 million. He already had this massive Facebook page with 2 million followers that he built up over a few years from funny memes, right? So he had 2 million followers on Facebook. When Facebook launched the ability to create video content, he was already on there. And instantly out of that, he created a game called Color Switch, like a mobile phone game, just some sort of like random user-friendly um, game. And what he used to do was, he used to source people like myself that were on the come up, you know, on Facebook, such as like, you know, someone having like 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers. And what he would do was he approached us, meaning me, and he goes, hey bro, I've got this page with 2 million followers. I would love to help you promote your videos and we can do some sort of like bargaining or collaboration. What I want you to do is basically in your next video, I want you to post that video on your page with nothing, just like a native video, but then do another edit, a second edit with my game in the video for about five seconds and send it to me and I'll post it on my page. Then in return, wow. I'm going to share one of your videos of your choice off my page. And every single time this guy used to share a video of mine, you get a million views. It was powerful, bro. So he, he powerful. He had that power. He was Cracked like the, the code. OG guy. That's like the OG influencer marketing. The guy, the, guy, the, the guy helped me grow so many followers on Facebook. You don't understand. 
and, and, That's he, genius. and he didn't tell me that at the time. <laughs> you went on Facebook. Yeah, so we've touched on sort of the business side um, of sort of a few quick tips. I mean, you can go so much deeper. But I'm also interested to hear for those guys out there who are listening in the locker room, we've got to give them the people what they want. We've got to give people the keys to the kingdom. If you want to... The level of people that want to be influencers and creators out there these days is absolutely through through the roof because the amount of money you can make and the, the value that comes off of it. From both of you, I guess, you've both been pretty successful. What are three tips from the audience building side of things if you have any off the top of your head that people can implement straight away to grow an audience if they're scared? Like, Chris, you were quite scared and it wasn't be- until wasn't Jamie... Scared, right? Oh, well, kidding, you sound I'm like I'm you were. Kidding, I'm kidding. It wasn't until Jamie came across and yeah. gave you those nuggets. So 100%. I guess you guys can be the those bigger he brothers and give nuggets. them the, yeah. the keys. Yeah, to the I gave Chris my nuggets. Yeah, I think nuggets. I think there's there's <laughs> a few wall. things. There's a few things. I think people have to understand that like advice gets outdated. So the first thing I would say is make sure that you know uh, whoever you're you're looking at is someone that's doing well in 2023 or whenever you guys are watching this podcast because. Things that used to work back in the day no longer work now. I'll give you an example. Back in you know the 2016, 2017 era, you could do an intro for one to two minutes and people would actually watch it. Now you have like one and a half to three seconds to grab their attention, otherwise they're off. So what I would say is my three biggest tips for someone starting out social media in this day and age that wanted to become a full-time TikToker, TikToker a full-time YouTuber, or just an influencer in general would be find a niche that you're really interested in. And the reason you need to do that is because... What's a niche? A niche is like a, a, a topic. A niche is something where if you look at a human being, right? It's like a, sp- someone, it's like a sp- specific yeah. kind of niche. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so Some you, people you, out there might not, might not know what you mean by that, just so everyone's 100%. on the same page. Exactly. So if you look at a human being, right? This is what I'm trying to explain. Um, we all like different things. You know, I might go to the, say for myself, I might go to the gym... I might do gardening on the weekends. I might go swimming. I might, you know, play soccer. But which element of my life do I choose to showcase to the world? And this is one thing that you guys out there have to choose. So if, 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 if you like something such as if you're passionate about cooking, then you need to stick to cooking for a while before you can expand into a personal brand. You have to understand as well that people often like you for who you are which is a thing, but to be discovered, you have to be liked for something you do before you become liked as a person. So niche yeah, basically wow. means- yeah. That's really good advice. Something that you do that relates to an audience, which you can kind of like put yourself in a box in initially. Mm. So for example, I was in the prank niche. So people knew me, that's Jamie, he's a prankster. <laughs> I'm sure Jamie also goes to the gym. I'm sure Jamie also travels to China once a year. You know what I mean? But I had to choose pranks. But then over time, you can slowly expand and show other elements of yourself. So that's the first thing, choose a niche. Second thing is, and I'm sure Chris will touch on this as well, is yeah, be can. <laughs> I want to touch on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. Is be consistent. Consistency is so important. I actually found that for the first two years of my career, I was on YouTube only and I only got to like 9,000 subscribers in two years and I was pumping videos. But the reason it was so slow is because um, my inconsistency where I'd post a video one week and then not for three weeks, then the next you week were, twice. You were very inconsistent. Very inconsistent. It was kind of like, it, it wasn't good for the audience. It wasn't good for me, but it also wasn't good for the algorithm. But your life was a bit all over the place as well. And which Correct. obviously resulted in, in your inconsistency. Correct. I remember, Correct. yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd kill it. You'd be like, you'd have a motivation phase for two weeks and you'd kill the videos and then... A week later, you're not posting and you're, you know, you're just chilling and you don't know what you're doing and then you're back on a grind. Mm. So I think you, quite f- you figured out your routine, which also ties into your health and fitness, which then therefore kind of all tied it in together and your business started doing better. Yeah, yeah, exactly, you know. And, mm-hmm. and the consistency element, like it doesn't just go hand in hand with your business, but you have to sort of have these foundations involved in your entire life. And I think that's, that's an area I used to struggle with, no longer anymore luckily, but that's why, you know, my business is obviously going... And growing so much more than before. So so yeah, it's really one of those things. And um, the third thing I would say is having um, having patience. Because we all Ooh. want that quick fix. That's something that not a lot of people have these days. You need to understand that if you get into the game of social media. We want it now. You want it right now. But you're not going to get it now. And I'll tell you why. Back when I started, it was much, 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 you could say harder to become a full-time YouTuber or a content creator because 
there were such little resources. There was such little, uh, 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 you know, um, less examples out there. Well, though. Less competition. But exactly on the flip side, there was less competition. Nowadays, people have to understand that the social media world is so, so, so prevalent to the point where every second person is now a TikToker. So what happens when, you know, um, uh, something uh, isn't scarce anymore? It becomes very neutralized. So if you see someone that's a TikToker, all of a sudden they're just a normal person. And TikTok as a platform has actually normalized, I guess, the value of content creators because now everyone's doing it. Whereas back in the day, there was only like a select few people that it's did so it. It's so saturated. It's so saturated. So patience is another thing. You got you to gotta make sure that you're, you have the ability to to understand that this will be a five to 10 year game plan, but you also have to be smart within that five to 10 years and not go for the shiny objects too fast, which which you know is very hard to do sometimes. So yeah, that's why you got your Audi RS3. That was after about <laughs> <six>, seven <laughs> years. <so. laughs> Chris, you got any wisdom to yes. download for us? I'm sure you got some yes. awesome tips to help people grow because you've sort of hit it more recently as well. Mm. So I'm gonna stick to uh, TikTok because I guess that's where I found most of my success. Um, if you want to call it success. Um, so I, I, I like this saying of success leaves clues. So um, basically, when if you're trying to find what you want to do, um, as, as Jamie said, number one niche. But um, if, if, you, if you want to see what, what you should post or what kind of direction to go through, find something that you like and then do your research. So for example, on TikTok, there's a, there's a, place obviously where you search so you can search say for myself say couple comedy right i search in couple comedy then i can go into the filters and i can press so not a lot of people actually know you can do this but you press um in the three dots and then you go uh time frame so i'll say in the last three three months um and most like videos now what this what this essentially shows me is social proof. So what is successful on this app in the last three months? Because obviously the algorithm changes, people's taste, trends change. So what's doing well? Um, and I find I find what are some similarities between the videos? What is what are the hooks? What are the points that are making people laugh? What are people liking? Um, what are the comments like? How are they interacting with each other? Then I'll take notes and then I'll apply that to my uh, my content with my girlfriend. You know what I, I love about everything we just spoke about is everything we've sort of touched on is universal principles that you just implement no matter where you are, no matter what platform, 100%. you know what area of life, consistency, social proof, finding a niche, adding value, all these things, like when you actually boil down the tactics to everything that you do, they're all universal principles that you can apply in every area. And that's something that we kind of we want to do in, in the locker room as well is it's all about developing transferable skills, you know? Understanding how to create content, understanding the, the key assets of negotiation, understanding the key pin- principles of business. All these things, once you get the foundations and the principles right, the next TikTok, the next social platform that comes up, the next business model, you, once you have these foundational principles, you can apply them no matter where it's at and get success. So it's just interesting. I noticed that they're all similar. Yeah, 100%. You know, as we spoke about before, you know, um, certain facets of your life will then translate into others. So, for example, you can't find a person that has been wildly successful making money and assume that they, you know, don't don't uh, don't take care of other aspects of their life as well. You know, I think it's a holistic, uh, you know, mm. thing that we all have to it achieve. Crosses over, and it crosses sure. over. Um, social media, as much as it is a tool for success and it's such a great thing that has happened in the last 10 to 20 years, there's also a lot that people don't realize about social media. Is and I think that, especially coming from uh, a position that I've been in for the past 10 years, I've experienced many highs, but also many lows. <laughs> Wait, is it this fake? is where I was going to go. Is it fake? Is, is social media... F- I thought some, it, some things are fake I about social media, I thought everything you put on is exactly your life and it's not a highlight reel. You and know it's what? I thought that as well until I uh, did it myself. Real. And uh, yeah, 90% is uh, most uh, mostly a facade. Oh my God. Nah. So you're not actually Jamie... Wait. My real name's James. So that's a big one, right? Don't mention is that it to actually? the audience. So you actually yeah, have actually. a big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I thought you'd seen it a couple of times. Um, Anyway, speaking of highs and lows, I want to hear the, (laughs) I want to hear the juicy, what's the craziest thing? I mean, there's crazy things that happen. I want to hear, what's the craziest thing that happened that's happened to you in social media? Like the craziest thing that's ever happened. Let's let's touch on, bro. Our lawyers lawyers just looking at us. (laughs) The Nick Kyrgios uh, tennis match noises. Sorry, before we get into this, I just want to say, guys, if you haven't realized it is currently nighttime, okay? Look how beautiful this landscape is. The city landscape at night. Guys, this is 
Sydney, the, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. The most beautiful. I know we always say this, but you've seen it during the day, but now you get to see the beauty of the night. Look at the Harbour Bridge. You can see the Opera House. It's it's phenomenal. And we are, again, blessed. We are blessed to be in this place, to do our – what we do, We you know, we come here, three friends – you know, let's talk about the locker room, give advice, share ideas um, in this most beautiful place that we've been given. Um, again, shout out to Getaways, um, hooking it up for us to give us this yes, unreal, unreal podcast. Yeah, it literally studio. doesn't get better than this. Right? 100%. And Sydney's a very big city and you don't always get this view everywhere. You know, this is the most iconic landmarks in the entire city, in the entire country, most likely. And uh, yeah, shout out to Getaways. Uh, you know, these guys have been amazing to us in terms of allowing us to use their facilities to do this podcast every single week. So if you guys do want to check them out, make sure to go to getaways.com. There's heaps. Or look in uh, the link in the description below. All right, craziest story now. So my craziest- I want to hear about- I don't. Know, I haven't actually heard too much about this. I want to hear about the. Uh, what do you want to hear, baby? The Nick Curios. Oh, Ooh. we're dropping names. Your name dropped. We're gonna, we're gonna the sex noises we're gonna at the tennis match. That was the, probably the most vile thing you've done. Wait, what happened? I don't know. Did you know about this? I what is it? Sex? It. What? Did I've got no idea. Is it sex? sex? What? Ra- ra- he had sex at the Nick Kyrgios match. Did yes, I? Yes, live. Was that me? The OG OnlyFans. I didn't even realize I did that. <laughs> All right. Yes, guys. It is true. The craziest thing I've ever done in social media in my career. Had to be, yeah, when I made that sex noise at the Nick Kyrgios match in 2017, 2018. <laughs> take, us, take us through, like, uh, obviously we could be here for hours, but give us a nice summary. Take us through what you were thinking, how you thought this is going to either make or break your social media. Where were you at this time? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's pretty crazy. So, yeah, at the time, guys, I'd been doing social media for about five years. I, I had about, I think, two million followers on Facebook and I basically have always, uh, you know, looked at social media from what's next. What's my next viral video? What's my next, you know, um, angle for content essentially? And I was in a group um, of mates, uh, you know, myself, Jackson Adoldi, Shami, you know, Luke Owen was there as well. The boys. And we always basically like, we were friends. dropping names, (laughs) eh? But we had healthy competition. The crew. Yeah. yeah. You know, we'd always be going viral. Yeah, Drake. Drake was there. I I was on James was there in the background and trying to get it. Trying to get a look in. <laughs> exactly. It was so, a cool so there was there was this one phase, but this one era where they were all going viral. Jackson and Luke were doing the silly salmon challenge. Shami was doing the you wouldn't do it challenge. And you just felt left out. And I just felt left out essentially. So I said to myself, <laughs> what do I want to do right now that's gonna get me back on the map to essentially you I'm know, gonna make get me, sex noises? <laughs> you know, up to the level of my friends going viral twenty four seven. And I remember this so vividly. How does that even how is that the number one thought? That I remember comes this I remember this so vividly. So during that time, I used to have a few themes. One of my themes happened to be me making sex noises in random places and getting people's reactions. There was one afternoon, I remember I was, I was in a, an area called Brunswick in Melbourne and I was sitting in my car and I remember seeing all these videos that you know the boys were posting and obviously they were going so viral. And genuinely, as you say, Chris, I felt left out. And I called my mum. I go, mum, I don't know what's going on right now. I'm upset. But for some reason, all my friends are going viral and I'm not. What do I do? Write a letter to the universe. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> and my mum is a very, uh, you know, great woman. She's got a lot of wisdom and she's very wise. And, you know, she kind of just knows me very well. And she goes, don't worry. It will sort itself out. Anyways, I remember driving home that day. And the moment I got home, for some reason, I felt compelled to open my Facebook messages. Big deal. <laughs> it's like 100,000 messages. I do t- I, I, I've always checked my Instagram and all these uh, other apps, but Facebook was one of those apps where I was just like, oh, I'm not too sure if like it's legit what people are saying. Anyway, this one afternoon, I got home and I just decided to open it. I opened this one message from a guy. I forgot his name. We'll pop it up on screen. And he goes, hey, bro, you wouldn't go into the next Nick Kyrgios match and make sex noises in front of the crowd. And I go, what the hell? My mum was right. <laughs> Everything will work itself out. And I go, that's the Whoa, most that was genius a light bulb idea. Moment when, as soon as you read the message, you that went was, light bulb. It was a full light bulb. Wow. That was the most genius idea anyone had ever told me. And I go, done, I'm doing it tomorrow. And so I went onto the Australian Open <laughs> website and I typed in, you know, the next uh, Nick Heroes match. It just so happened to be that there were two tickets left in like the good seating area, um, not general admission, that were right behind the servers. So I had to basically come up with this whole master plan on how to basically make this huge sex noise that will 
change the world and get all this media attention oh, and go viral. But yeah, basically I was getting death threats. I was getting all these weird messages. I was getting people calling me like saying nothing and just like breathing on the phone. I was just getting destroyed in the media. And I, got a, I, got a, I got a medal at home somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. basically I'm like done and I booked it. <laughs> and and yeah. the night before I had to make sure that the the tonality, the duration of the noise the pitch, you name it, about what I was about to do the next day was on point. So I started to practice in the shower. Because you've never experienced- Because <laughs> I've never done a sex noise in my for, life. For, for that long. Correct. You yes. don't usually- For that long. <laughs> exactly. It was a good like- seconds, Mac. It was a good 30 <laughs> seconds and I'm used to five. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I had to rehearse. And the next day I basically woke up, rehearsed a bit more in the morning and I just went. Got to the stadium. You're, it was when you were dead silent. When you were rehearsing, did your mum think you were doing something? Else? I wasn't with my mum. I was in Melbourne. Australians opening. Australian opening. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carry on. So yeah, I basically remember that that day. The neighbors, that just you're hearing him. <laughs> neighbors. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I remember the day so clearly. I rocked up to the stadium and it was the first time I had been to a tennis match. And the silence was absolutely deadly. Like I had no idea that they were actually silent for some reason. And so when I got there, I go, okay, I've got to make sure I time this perfectly. And I got out my phone. I waited for like, I think it was about half an hour into the match. And I just made sure that I did it at the precise timing of Nick Kyrgios about to serve, but like mid-serve essentially. And so many things could have gone wrong. You know, I could have mistimed it. I could have bitched out. I could have just like, you know, testy uh, pop, like testy pop, <laughs> not recorded. Anything could have happened. Disaster. Imagine but basically, you don't record it. I know. Basically, I did it. Everything went to plan. And then I was the most hated man in Australia for the next uh, three months. No, you first you <laughs> called us and said, guys. That's watch true. this game and I'm like freaking out like well, what has he done <laughs> and he won't tell didn't me he, didn't he say he won't watch, tell find me, me on the news he, tomorrow yeah he wouldn't tell me and I'm thinking like something's happened but he's like kind of cheeky about it I'm like tell me like I'm your best mate and he wouldn't tell me and then I'm like in the lounge room with my parents I'm like oh Jamie's gonna be on TV and they're like <laughs> what is he doing <laughs> 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 oh it's Jamie <laughs> and I was like how do I explain this though? what did your parents think when they saw it I think it would, they didn't even know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> like, 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 is this real? Like, did, you have to it, was, it was, it's shock. Right. Like, it's like, it's like a wow you factor. You have to have some serious balls to do that. Right, like, he you was, have to have no shame he, at all. He didn't want to leave his house. Like, oh, yeah, he, what happened after he that? He was so, he was, oh. so he'll tell you, but I remember him telling me like, I, I'm getting like death threats. People hate really? me. Really? Like, he, he was like, to me, like the whole of Australia hates me. He's like, I won't leave my house. And then he'll explain what happened you next. were hated that much bro hated yeah so like well, so yeah. he thought I was, or maybe yeah, initially yeah. he was i don't know yeah so like the moment it happened i basically was like on like every single news channel there was <laughs> and he owned it by the way he owned the news channels because he said to me he goes they're gonna make me look try to look like an idiot and try to make me look like the bad guy and he goes i'm very specific he's he's good in under pressure and in interviews yeah, so he did handle them well but they still as they always do took it out of context tried to make him like a villain Etc. Etc. And everyone believes the news because news is all real. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Looking back, I definitely wouldn't do it again. Um, but no regrets. But yes, no I was. Regrets. I was definitely. Uh, I felt like I was the most hated man in Australia, if not the world. My dad in China saw what happened. No he, way. He everything him again. Every no, I didn't. Everything. <laughs> he actually goes. I know why you did it. I understand. <laughs> oh really? I love you, son. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, everything in China's blocked. So he even saw it. But yeah, basically I was getting death threats. I was getting all these weird messages. I was getting people calling me, like saying nothing and just like breathing on the phone. I was just getting destroyed in the media. And yeah, Chris is right. I couldn't sort of like, I was living in Melbourne during that time and I couldn't leave my house for a couple of days. I thought I was gonna get bashed. I then did all these like interviews with like a current affair, Channel 9, Channel 7, uh, The Project. Like all these people. I didn't either. I think, yeah, I mean, the exposure, I guess, like came from, I guess, the virality of what happened. But yeah, I think it was a very interesting time. I did think I was hated, but then it turns out I actually wasn't. It was just the media presenting yeah. the articles as if Bro, everyone, everyone loves you. Well. It was legendary yeah. status. It was like the, the king of the city. Years, yeah. But then I realized that people actually found it funny. So that was good. And also Nick Kyrgios won the match. So I didn't feel too bad after. But yeah, I wouldn't do it again. I don't advise people to Bro, do it. Bro, for the next last 10 years or however long it is, whatever, five years, like he, he, it's almost like nothing else he did it, it mattered. Not that he didn't. Obviously, yeah. he did. But everyone's like, "Hey, Nikiro's guy. Oh, he was, he was you." And he's like, "Yeah, I've done a lot of other things, but yeah. cool, even I'm, even I'm gonna take it. Like, it's fine." Even still to this day, Bro, like that was still. a few years ago. Like, you walk past people in the city, and like, you, 
get stopped every two minutes and people making the noises yeah. at you. <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It was an that's interesting era. Was. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, viral videos are interesting though if we want to talk about that. You know, uh, I think people have this idea of going viral as like, oh, the, the moment I go viral, my life's going to change, which actually isn't the case. There's two ways you can go viral and I've learned these from personal experience. The first way is media viral, which is what happened with the tennis. So what that means is you do something, you post a video, and then all these media publications, you know, talk about it. They write articles, Daily Mail. Well. You got you're on the news. Everything happens. Which you, yes, you yeah. get public. You get published on. That's on, the blue tick. You right? get blue tick, yeah. which is that's what can happen from right? that. Yeah. And now you can buy it. Exactly. The second way you go viral is social media viral, which means you know you might get some media coverage, but there's not much. But your video just goes viral on social media. So for example, your video will have a hundred million views. Mm. The difference be- between the two is that. There are pros and cons of both. The pros of media viral is that your name gets, I guess, up to a mainstream level, you could say. People start like knowing who you are and your brand. The negative though, is that when these media publications or websites um, or companies, corporations post a video, they post it themselves. So the views go to them and not you. Mm. On the flip side, if you go social media viral, the, the, the pro is you get all the traction and you get you reap all the rewards. So your followers will grow. Your video will get 100 million views, which means 1% of that will probably follow you. But on the flip side and, you know, um, in the negative side of that, um, you don't get much uh, media coverage. So I would much rather go social media viral because ultimately it will improve your brand. Mm. I'd prefer going social media viral more consistently than media viral. You want, you know, a couple of media things to happen. You can't choose. but You can't choose. But those are the difference. And I think people don't really understand that. I th- yeah, yeah, I I I yeah, I agree with everything you just said. Um, but me personally, because I'm still new to this, I uh, I've only you love s- some media viral, you wouldn't you? I, I just yeah, I'd like I'll to get to a, I'd like out. to get a blue tick without having to pay for it, <laughs> and hence why I don't have one still because I didn't pay for it. Respect though, respect. respect. Yeah, I could have pretended like respect. no, I swear, I just got it before they launched. <laughs> um, but yeah, me personally, because I'm still new to some form of success or viral virality. I've only seen, I'd say, 90% positive of social media because um, I'm still quite new to it. You know, it's really refreshing. Like, I've seen, I've, it's like I've been there before because I've seen everything firsthand with Jamie. Mm. Like, when, when he's transitioned from no one to everyone knowing him, like, you know, we'd be anywhere in, literally anywhere in Australia that we'd go. And people were like, come into my restaurant, eat for free. Here's some free shots. Like, Stay at uh, this hotel. Like people just throwing free stuff at him. No, you mean not even asking for it. Like just genuinely because they love him. They love his content. They want to, obviously they want him to promote their company or whatever it is, but they just want to, guys would, like even for no promo, they just want him, they just want to see him, be friends with him, connect with him. And I saw that with him and it, I thought it was crazy. And it's like social, the, the social proof that social media does is insane. Mm. Like it's it's like a power that is un, unexplainable. Like to the point where like this is something so simple. Like Jamie literally could do anything in public, and it'd be okay. <laughs> like in the sense of like, if Jamie if Jamie was in a crowded place and fell over, and fell over and spilled ice cream on himself and looked like an idiot, right? Done that before. Everyone would be like, oh, that's just Jamie. <laughs> like it's completely Sucked fine. In. It's completely fine. Because he, he's a funny guy, yeah, you know, yeah, he's a yeah. comedian, he's a prankster, right? If anyone else did that, that isn't in social media, they're like, what the fuck's going on with that guy? <laughs> Something's wrong with him. Yeah. He, he will literally, on as a joke, just trip over in public. And people are like... Oh, Everyone just it's, laugh at him. It's, but, just, but, it's, but, just, but, it's just Jamie, it's okay. But don't forget, right? That was my brand as well, being silly. But imagine someone like, imagine, I know what you're trying to say, but imagine someone with a much, much greater level of like, you know, notoriety, um, like like, like Andrew or, like Andrew Tate yeah. Yeah. who has this image of being so perfect did that. It then it's a whole other story. It yeah. Work. yeah, but still he could he, he, like he, he could, could do something else and laugh. get away with yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He could he could do uh, yeah within his 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 brand or whatever it is. Right. But I just find it fascinating how once people know you, even like even simple as dating, like once someone knows, like I would see it with Jamie as well. Um, I had my girlfriend when I found Clout, so I, <laughs> ne- I never got to do that. That's fine. Um, but like Probably you know, a good thing Yes yeah, good thing <laughs> But like Because girls know him um, They know his life Because it's on social media It's almost like verified That he's 
somewhat not a creep. He's a nice guy. He He's funny, X, Y, Z. Mm. They're like, all right, skip all the get to know each other. Like, I know him. I already know him. Yeah, so yeah, I followed yeah. him for five years. That's crazy. But any other random guy, you need to get to know them or yeah. girl. So That's probably why everyone's chasing it. I f- yeah. So I found that really, really cool. Um, negatives, I guess, for me personally, which again, I'm still new to it. I found um, there is an invasion of privacy. Mm. For me personally, that was one of the biggest things. There's trolls, which I... I guess you can nowadays you can just mute them and delete their comments and whatever. So it doesn't really affect me. I don't I don't read into them. I don't let them affect me. But the invasion of privacy, like sometimes you don't look the best. You know, <laughs> you know, you just want to go for a cheeky kebab or sandwich or you know, bacon egg in the early morning. You haven't brushed your hair. You know, you just want to quickly get something. Someone's like, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm like fuck, Dude, you're a catfish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah, yeah, it's not, a lot of pressure. Not a catfish, but like. As Jamie knows, you're expected to look perfect all the time. People, people are like, why? He, he's always he can't. He's not a normal human being. Like he mm-hmm. again, not not so much with me. I've seen it a lot more with Jamie. But yeah, you can't. You have to always be on. Mm. I'm like paranoid now. Like I'm like, am I? Am I like? Don't pick my nose in the car. Like not that I do, but you know, always got to have everything right. My hair's got to be fine just in case someone comes up or says something or you know. And sorry. One more thing that is a very, very important, not important, but quite a good point is on the topic of you have to always be on. Mm. So say say Jamie's having a shit day or even now, nowadays me as well. Say we're having a shit day, terrible day, the worst thing ever's happened and someone comes up to you. They don't know what you've gone through. Hey, hey, Chris, can I get a photo? Or hey, Bailey, can I get a photo? You've had the worst day ever. If you turn around and say, nah, man, sorry, like even in a nice way, sorry, man, I, I'm just not in the mood. Uh, maybe next time they go and pose <laughs> you know Bailey's an absolute dick he's, mm. he's so up himself and Jamie ha- experienced this as well because he was so nice to everyone and he always said hi and he always was on but I would be with him I'm like fuck how did he do that like mm. he had the shittest day and he'd snap out of it and he would never say no to anyone he'd always smile he'd always put it on but it's like you, he's human yeah, that kind of comes with it, though. I guess it does if you come if with you're it. if you're gonna pursue, that's good for people to know. Though, if they want to yeah. pursue this career, pursue being in the spotlight. Say pursue, get, pursue again. <laughs> pursue pursuing the spotlight. A kind of that, that's what you have to expect. You kind of you kind of yeah. asking for it to a degree. And I guess yeah. there's pros and cons with everything, which is probably the perfect segue. Unless you want to. Yeah, I think I want to say one more thing. Yeah. I think this goes beyond just social media and like the world we live in 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 relation to you know online content and being a public sort of person in in the space i think that there's a lot of things in life in general that you don't feel like doing that we still have to do and i think when people ask me like hey you know how come you know you say yes to a photo all the time or you're nice to people that come up to you it's because i wouldn't be here without them 100%. Yeah, that's a good there's point. no way i would be in the position that i am in in this place sponsored 100%. by getaways um <laughs> doing this podcast you know having the ability to, to you know travel and, and make videos without, without the people that support me so i make sure that in every way possible i give back and i think it's also important and chris and i are obviously on the same page as this like we don't think that we're better than anyone no yeah. way we literally think that we're exactly the same as every other person here um we don't think that we're above right. anyone we literally like want others to understand that from what we've experienced and been through in our lives we think it's just so like upset uh you know it's such a bad thing that this social media world has created people that think are so idolized others. to the point they think they're better than others well, and we would no never one, ever bro. think that you have no a, idea just because you got a bit of clout and a few followers it means nothing it means doesn't nothing. mean you're better than anyone you're everyone should be humble everyone should be equal exactly um, and treat everyone the same way so while we're talking about you know all this sort of stuff we just want to make it clear that you know we definitely um are on the same playing field as you guys and we yeah. respect everyone so i like that humility bro it's a great trait to have I think that's the perfect segue though. We've kind of spoken about the the highs or sort of like the benefits or practical tips that people can implement as a business, as someone who wants to be an influencer. I mean, social media has completely changed all of our lives and so many people's lives and there's so many benefits that come off the back of it. It's changed the world, literally. But on the flip side, and one thing we also want to touch on is kind of how it's also eroded a lot of, I guess, values or a lot of people's mental states to a degree where it's kind of consumed their lives. And there is actually some negatives if you're not using it as a tool to grow an audience, create content, and you're purely a consumer. As everyone's aware, sort of the 
the dopamine instant gratification world is being created you know the pressure of comparison particularly in the fitness industry self-consciousness yeah, all these things that have been mm. built off the social media thing which i think is important for us to touch on as well and something that i mean something i guess just a practical example of going on the, going on the other side because i haven't really like probably most people who, who are listening to this or watching haven't had any taste of like the social media lifestyle, but more, more so on the consumption side. And I guess a practical tip in terms of like using it to your advantage or kind of trying to distance from the, the doom scrolls people say, because a lot of people are stuck in that. It's like a vortex of consumption and like, you know, you see d- depression rates and all these things impacted from people just sitting on, sitting there, no mission, no value, no purpose in life, no God, to have a moral compass and a direction, someone to look to, and it's actually affecting a lot of people. So one of the greatest things that I actually tried, uh, I went off social media completely for 10 months. It's one of the best things I've ever done. Just in terms of like, just resetting, being focused, because it is a big distraction whilst you guys are making money and followings off it. For a lot of people, 100%. it's just it's just mm. a, a void of energy, attention span, mind, uh, mind space where you could be focusing on other things, right? Mm. Yeah. And one of the greatest things that I actually tried when I went off social media for 10 months was called a dopamine detox. And it's kind of something that's I wish become, I could do that. become familiar. Me too, me too. But it completely changed everything for me. And so just to explain. Yeah, explain it. A dopamine detox is essentially eliminating any sort of short-term gratification or the the chemical called dopamine. Andrew Huberman talks about this a lot. I'm sure a lot of people have listened to him. But it's basically removing any instant gratification for a weekend. So I did this from a feel-good chemical. So from a Friday to a Sunday, three days, what I did was uh, no caffeine, no social media, so no scrolling, no Netflix. No sex. Yeah, (laughs) no sex, (laughs) no music, uh, no caffeine, uh, no, no sex yeah that, yeah that as well uh no, no foods facts. that taste good so no sugars no no fatty foods just anything that gives you a short-term rush completely cut it out and the is that point why you, you didn't see us that that period of time oh yeah so. i went he's not alistair <laughs> <laughs> yeah I went. No, you didn't see us because we're a rush uh are we a dopamine rush you yes exactly oh good i'm good well that's kind of that's kind of the premise so And during this time, you will be bored out of your absolute mind. But at the end of these few days, you will be amazed at how much your attention span increases. So the whole next week while I was at work, my ability to focus on a task was 10x. So things that would usually be so boring, so tedious, you can't focus. My ability to concentrate went through the roof because you completely reset your receptors that are constantly looking for this rush. You You put yourself in a position of boredom where you can actually sit with your own thoughts and... Yeah, just process but, what's going on. But when you come back to it, aren't you more, much more susceptible? No, because I mean, maybe like if you have no self control, right? potentially, and yes, you you're a bit, but you're just way more sensitive. So whilst yeah. before you used to have you know three scoops of pre workout, blast your music, you used to ha- have to scroll for an hour to get a hit. You literally can do do the slightest little things and get the same amount of incentive dopamine mm, from the cool. smallest task mm. and tasks and if you rewire your brain to focus on things that are actually productive during this so switching from scrolling to actually thinking all right what do i actually want to do with my life in the next few months what are some practical goals and things i want to achieve and rewire your reward chemical towards things that are, pr- that are productive it will completely change your life and it's something mm. that i did and i recommend everyone trying it look wow. search it up dopamine detox um it's and completely and a it's a game changer cutting out the social media was the biggest part. that's that's wow. the biggest part wow did it for 10 months and 10 the, months the mental clarity the focus like you could imagine not having all these external inputs that just wow. fry your brain for 10 months the amount of mm. clarity thought process the things i realized about myself 10, as well 10 seconds what, what do you think exactly. what do you what do you think a first little like milestone could be for people that want to sort of do the same thing i'd like, say just two days hour. like a week like dedicate a weekend no nah, start an did hour. you say an hour, an hour bro an hour? <laughs> Bro, an hour. I don't know. I, I don't think know. you've Maybe. got to go a bit, a bit more. So, like uh, for example, like hands on than that. When you wake Let's say up, say one day, twenty four hours. When you wake up, first thirty that's minutes. That's true. That's true. You could start minutes, baby steps. First thirty minutes, you don't go on your phone when you wake up. Mm. You do your prayer. You brush your teeth. You get ready for the day. Have get your food, whatever, coffee. Then once you're ready, then you go search because everyone wants that dopamine hit when they're here. So that's mm. potentially an idea, right? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, on the dinner table or when you're with family and friends, keep your phone away. When you're in a conversation or a meeting, keep your phone away. Yeah. Um, don't take it with you to the toilet, for example. Yeah. Little things like this, I think, again, I it's haven't a great done start, it, yeah. but I think it could be a stepping stone because a whole day out of nowhere is a big 
<laughs> like I, I give it. That's true. But I mean, yes, it is scary. But I mean, is it that scary? I think yes. like <laughs> whilst well, it can be, and and maybe I don't know. Talking it too. Like, <laughs> but you guys are actually you doing yeah. something productive with it. I think for someone, yeah, like 20, for twenty four hours, is always. it real? Is it really, really that hard? Yeah, I, I, I think. I, I don't think. Know. I think. I think it's true. We do do like obviously like we run a business from social media, but we also Waste because so of the fact time, that we're on right? social media all the time, there are things that pop up. For example. If I'm trying to schedule a video and I go on TikTok to open the app to schedule a video, I'm bang. I'm accidentally on there for half an hour. I justify it by I'm working. But I, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe you guys are even more stuck than other people. But I think, yeah. yeah 100%. It's, I, I also think that um, it's, 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 very, it's very interesting with dopamine if we, if we want to get onto that subject because it's like the things that give us that reward instantly and the thing that makes us feel good is actually some of the things that can be the most harmful. I always, for, for example, like make sure that, especially weekdays, five days a week, the first thing I do when I wake up is I pray. I don't go on my phone because I think that even if I was to go on my phone and I've been sort of like cementing my routine for many years now, the moment I go on my phone first thing, my day's ruined. I don't mean that literally because my day can recover from it, but I'm just saying it, it just sets the day up on such a negative note for me personally that I need to like kind of do something that would discipline myself and get me out of that rut fast before it kind of takes over the day. But is that and specific content or anything? It's not. I just feel like if I wake up and the first thing I do in the morning is check my phone, it's like I haven't done anything to deserve that essentially, to deserve that dopamine. So it, it sort of sets me in like a very subdued mindset for me wanting to get other tasks done during the day. And what you're actually doing as well is the chances are you're going to have text messages from a bunch of people. So automatically off the bat, you're entering your day with, other people's demands Stresses. taking priority Stresses. on what you're meant to do. Like if someone mentioned correct, you saying, I correct. need this, I need that, all of a sudden your day is prioritized it's around other people's tasks as opposed to having no outside distractions. Yep. If you haven't checked your phone, there's no one that can take you off course. You, all you have to think about is what you need to get done. So Exactly. And for my, for my personal routine, um, especially weekdays, I'm extremely calculated with time. So like I literally section my time into half an hour intervals. So if I was to check my phone, and not like sort of time it. This is just me personally. I'm a bit meticulous with this whole thing. Then I could like waste a whole, whole half an hour, which means I get to the gym late, which means I start working late, which means I can't do other things. I have to do like Chinese practice or Bible studies or things that actually matter. Something's always got to give because if you're going to consume social media uh, aimlessly or if you're going to go on your phone first thing in the morning, that half an hour that you spend on that is going to have to give somewhere else in the day. So yeah, I agree. it's always a trade-off. But separate to dopamine, sorry, to go on that, I, I can't remember which self-help book got a book I was reading I don't know if it was thinking grow rich or one of those books mm. um, they were saying that separate to dopamine the when you do go on your phone in that first half hour when you wake up um, there obviously you, you're getting updates from different people's lives there's going to be some point there's going to be some negative a negative video something that's gonna uh, even subconsciously gonna give you some negative uh, vibes someone's gonna you're gonna read an email something's gonna happen that it's gonna set you into a negative notion exactly. and even if it's subconsciously you don't realize at the time that's gonna set the uh, precedence pre uh, for the rest of the day and and you're gonna exactly what you said I don't know why but I have a shit day mm. subconsciously you never know it why, always starts somewhere it starts it starts because one thing's ticked you off that you didn't even realize and the rest of the day is just something's off it's mm. off you don't feel as good you don't have that spring in your step when people talk to you you're not as happy uh, every little thing slightly pisses you off a little bit more and it just puts you off. Whereas, as you said, when you start the day productive, you're already, you know, half an hour ahead of everything. You're feeling good. You don't have that negative, um, you know, vibe from your social media. You know, I, I, we've all witnessed it. You know, what's interesting in terms of like, people can always backtrack and figure out what is the cause of something to go wrong as a habit. True. So, for example, like if you have a shit day, for example, you can actually backtrack and figure out where this all Break started. It but we don't do did it. Enough. Did it start that day? Did it start the night before? Did you get to bed late? Did you go on your phone first thing? Something happened to me the other day that threw me off. And for the last one and a half, two days, I felt extremely off in every single way. Mm. And I was like, what is going on? Like, is something, is something happening or is something, you know, occurring? And I was actually able to backtrack to this one particular thing that happened that completely set me off on this trajectory of, you could say, negativity. But now that I know, I know how to obviously change it as well. That's, so a, good, that's a good concept. Actually taking the time to backtrack and, and figure out what it was. I do that in, in, with my work, with personal training. People mm. are like, oh, I feel bloated. Mm. Or I, I, know I put on weight or I, my back hurts. So I was like, all right, let's, 
Do you remember? Start? Yeah. Mm. Do you remember what What did you do today? Did you Did you drink milk? Did you drink extra water? Have you just sleep? How's mm. your stress? Like all these things we backtrack, and they're like, "Oh yeah, actually yesterday I did have X Y Z. Mm. Oh, that's that could be it. Oh, I just started my period X Y Z. Like yeah. whatever it is, and and we do backtrack. So it's it's a very good concept, and I think a lot of people could actually a practical hundred percent a practical way you can actually do that, which is what I do is. I do one of these two things now, but I've done both of them. The first thing is um, I track all my food. So I think it's uh, quite a known, yeah, same. a known ailment. You don't have to, bro. You're just lucky and you train hard. <laughs> lucky. It's, not, it's, <laughs> it's not got the Greek work. god physique. It's exactly. Born with it. I think, I think like a huge, um, you know, topic in, in, in you know, our lives is food and, and, and how we feel, obviously, emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. And food does play a big part in our lives. So I think for me personally, when I actually track my food, I know, okay, how come I felt, you know, tired this day? How come I felt under the weather this day? And I can backtrack it to the food. The second thing I have done before, I, I'm not currently doing it, is I, I was doing something called a daily reflection, which at the end of every single day, oh, I, I would have a list of things. Is it? I, yeah, it was in the secret as I well. I actually invented it, bro, so they stole it off me. <laughs> you wrote the book. I wrote the book, yeah. Um, it's basically like a list of things in categories of what I did. So for example, the first thing would be like food, water, sleep, um, electronics, uh, how much did I, you know, pray? How did I feel during the day? Just a section, like many sections of different uh, elements of the day that I can actually talk about and like just put like a one liner, like yes, good, out of 10, whatever it was. And so what you can do is you can then look back on like, one or two months of it and find patterns of like why you felt this way on particular days and figure out the reasons for it because your body's not going to tell you. Like it kind of sucks, right? You want to go get a blood test and you want your body to tell you what's going on, but you have to find it yourself. You have to figure it out for yourself. And I think by doing this, it really gives you like a tangible way with, with evidence and numbers to know what's going on and then obviously backtrack and figure it out. I think one other thing that I really want to touch on is that's come from this social media scene is the pressure of comparison and what's actually spiraled off the back of that. You know, we've seen particularly with, for a lot of young men, the pressure of physiques, uh, you probably seen in the fitness industry, right. the level of Psalms, People steroid do usage. Anything. I've like done Psalms. Yeah, same. Like when I was 20, I tried it. Because like the pressure Fuck, of comparison the that is like, than both you're the most likely. <laughs> but like the pressure is is insane. It's like the standard is so high, is, is so high of what you need to be achieving. And while, whilst I'm touching on that and whilst it is- They're both not natty. Fuck. <laughs> well, it's a long time ago, but- no, it's still, um, not, still yeah, not, but- it's a long time ago. Basically- there's, there's one practical thing that, that I heard which completely changed my perspective because we're talking about, you know, people starting a day off wrong and going on social media, comparing yourself with other people can actually start your day off wrong as well. But there was something, a quote that I heard, I can't remember who it was, but it completely changed my perspective and it stuck with me for a long time. It was, don't aspire to have the best ingredients, aspire to be the best chef. Have you guys heard that before? Mm. Break it so, down for me. I so need, let me break it down. So break the don't aspire to... Us. Don't aspire to have the best ingredients. Ingredients represent all the things that you can't change about your life. It's your family, your lineage, your genetics, all these things that you can't change. You know, if you're born with some uh, a disability or did all you, these things. Did you hear this quote before you did the Psalms or after? <laughs> I think the it was Psalms after. Inspired after. This quote. I think it was after. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So these are the things that you can't you can't change, right? So don't aspire. Don't look at someone else and what they've been given or because we're not all the same. We're not built for, we all have different purposes. We all have different callings. Aspire to be the best chef. Take everything that you've been given and try and build the most amazing creative thing yeah. that you possibly can without looking across the table and seeing what everyone else has had. Because realistically, sure. you weren't designed. You were put on this earth for a purpose. You were designed for a special purpose. And God has given you the gifts and abilities that actually direct you to that path, right? So I remember when I was young or like, you know, you're 13 and you look at Justin Bieber, it's like, oh, I'm, I wish I could sing like that. I wish I could sing like Jamie. Or like me. <laughs> oh, Jamie, yeah. But like, or the like thing is, surf. Now, you know, Jamie, I can't Jamie surf. can't surf. I'm Asian. I was drowning in the water. Here's the thing is that everyone has their unique abilities and the way that God's designed it is like, that actually directs you to your path, to your purpose. I'm so glad I'm looking back now that I can't sing because imagine if you're good at everything. You'd be so I mean, confused. It be bad. I mean, <laughs> it, would, it would be hectic, but <laughs> like, that's not the way it's designed. It sucks, man. That, <laughs> the fact that you aren't good at everything is a blessing because it's God saying like, this is your path. Follow what you're good at. That's a good point. That is your direction. So it's just that's something that's completely changed my perspective. Don't try and look at what everyone else has. Try and build from what you've been given. I think this is from and that's the, your path. The con like, I think this is from the perspective of someone that is doesn't have everything. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think Justin Bieber's going like, fuck, I hate how good looking and <laughs> handsome and rich. No, and not at all. Good not singer, at all. man. This sucks, bro. No, but mm-hmm. for example, I mean? there'd like, be plenty of things that he's not good at. He was probably born to sing. You can't, I mean, maybe he's, he's good, good at like boxer? every he's single at like thing. Every, like, he's good at like every sport and every music. No, he's not good at soccer. He is. No, I've seen him. I've seen him. You get the point. I'm fucking, he's my mate. <laughs> right? he's, you get the point. You get the point. <laughs> I love him. You, you're getting paid for this, aren't you? So yeah, that's it's just a bit of a bit of encouragement. And no, I agree. on that on that comparison thing, I actually this actually happened to me last week. So as you guys know, a few months ago I tore my LCL, which is a joint in your knee, um, sparring in jujitsu, and I was do, had to do a few months of rehab. And literally last week I was in the gym and I was just feeling a bit flat. You know, you you're going through rehab, you don't feel as as pumped up, feel as amped. You're like, you know, some psalms. <laughs> yeah, literally. I was probably I was about to <laughs> pump. pump a lot of trend just to get back to where I was. And <laughs> and it's sort of like, I just had this moment and a guy in a, in a wheelchair rolled up next to me, biggest oh. smile on his face. No, but he was having the time of his life. Like, no, but it woke you up. Yeah, and I just mm. had this big reality check. Like he was talking to everyone. He was smiling at me saying, hey bro, like, oh, like how's your day? And I just sort of like was in this bit of a slump and it just took me a second to sit back and realize like, man, sometimes you have to be grateful for what you have, I'm count mm. your blessings. Sometimes you just need a bit of a reality check. This guy's having the time of his life and probably, you know, there's probably things, that, other things that he's want, but he's found positivity and enjoyment with what he's had with the ingredients that he was given. Mm. And it was just a, a massive reality check to go, man, just sometimes you got to have perspective. A, yeah, perspective, be grateful, yeah. 100%. focus on what you have. God has a plan for you. He has a purpose and double down on it and everything's going to be okay. 100%. Yeah, and it kind of makes it easier. Massive, it makes it easier for you know for you to know like what exactly is the right path to go on, you know. Of course. And I think if you have too much variety and too many things going on out there, like there's no narrow narrow narrow, you know, path for you to go on and understand that this is the right one for you. So, I agree with that. 100%. That's really yeah. good. I got one more thing which is people can implement literally tomorrow just super quickly. It's it it, it's yeah, practical. Get your notepads out. This is we something that I also did when I went off the grid for uh, off social media for 10 months and this completely changed everything for me. So set aside a day in the next week, right? And this is going to represent race day. So on this day, I want you to map out for half an hour, a task for every single half an hour. If you work, this is if you're in sales, this is oh, going to be a breakthrough day. My colleagues tell me <laughs> this is my I day I every it day. It doesn't work for me, but anyway. Anyway, so whatever it is, set, set aside a task for half an hour every at every single interval and you sort of got to treat it like a race day right so get up earlier than you usually do go to sleep later and if you have to bludge a bit at work for a few days before this so that the pressure's building up so you can't sleep like you know that feeling you get before like a big tournament or a big race and you can't sleep because you're so anxious i want that to be the feeling that you have before you go to sleep and what you're going to do is have the most productive day of your life whether it's two gym sessions dedicate an hour to reading all these tasks in your day and at the end of the day You'll be, you might be exhausted. You might be w- taken out for, for a week. But what you've just done is you've just raised the bar three, four X of what you think. You might've thought you were being productive before, mm. but what we call this is capacity expansion. A lot of people out there think they're at their potential. Oh, I've got so much on my plate. Mm. Oh, I'm so tired. I've got all this pressure on me. You don't actually know what you're capable of until you put yourself through the ringer 100%. and put all the pressure yeah. on yourself, I stack the day to, to the max. And then you, at the end of this day, you're like, man, I just did four or five times the amount of tasks that I would usually do. And now you've just raised the bar and that completely changed everything for me because now I know when I'm actually being productive or I'm mm. just trying to come up with excuses. Mm. So it's something people can implement literally that's, yeah, this week cool. and it like actually like changed like everything that. for me. Because things actually take much less time than you think they take. Exactly. Um, sorry to quote again, but Andrew Tate actually mentions this. He, oh, he, you really he, like him, eh? He, uh, he mentioned a story about how there was a guy that was uh, filming a music video and then he saw the guy a year later and he was still doing it. And then to disprove how long it, it takes to do something, he actually did it in like a day or something. Mm. But I'm like you, I um, race day, not so much, but I definitely personally, like in my work days, I do do things in like half an hour interviews, not saying that I try and maximize everything to that degree, but it's so like miraculous when you actually figure out that you are so capable of doing things much faster than you think. Anxiety. Some things like I'll have a to do list. It's the best thing ever, and I would be so much, so much more productive. But it gives me anxiety. It's yeah, of oh, course. Like but is that yeah. a good level of anxiety? You have exactly. To ask uh, yourself that question. Get out of your comfort zone, zone brother. Some things I'll have a to do list th- that has like twenty five things on it, and I go, "What is going on? It's taking me like three weeks to do it." And then I go, "You know what? I'm going to do this in an hour." And I get it all done because you don't know like your capacity once exactly. again uh, reiterating what you said until you actually. Trial it out. And not every day is going to be like that. There are, we do not. have up and down days, but it's just good for people to understand what your actual 
capabilities are. And, and if you're a high performer and you want to get things <laughs> done and you want to be productive every day, like you're gonna have that odd day where you where it's a bit of a flop. 100%. Like I had one of them yesterday. I was a bit sick and like it was. I didn't get even like five percent of the things done today. Part of the process, bro. Was hoping to, but then I'm like not gonna let that obviously jeopardize the future. And I think it's the same with like diets and training. You know, a lot of clients I'm sure that, that you have, Chris. Oh no, I messed up one day. Like it's all over, but it's not really. No, nah, mm. it's overall picture. Exactly. So, yeah, so <laughs> earlier we touched on basically um, how social media is quite fake. We all know people who, um, you know, put on a facade, put on this highlight reel where they make it seem like they, they, you know, their world is li- lavish. Their their life is amazing. They, you know, fly first class. They go to all these nice restaurants, travel the world, X, Y, Z. But then they come back here. They're living in a shack. They don't eat. They eat sardines, baked beans, whatever. They don't, you know, and it's completely fake. And so I just want to touch on how, um, you know how fake social media can be at the same time um, how it can have this um, unrealistic expectation for both men and women to um, I guess be a certain uh, caliber of person uh, to be you know so f- good looking that is actually unattainable like even girls you know even like I, I remember the interview where you know I think it was Kylie Jenner Ar- Ariana Grande which is like I don't even look like me <laughs> she's literally like I don't look like me if the girl That's is saying crazy. that about herself, mm. how 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 is anyone else going to even be close to that? And then all these you know fillers, plastic surgery, all these things that people are trying to do, like it's 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 impossible. I I, I was I was looking at this um, girl's post and it, she it was this post of a girl right. She she posted on Instagram. She was semi well known, um, classy classy girl. No, no, like she was at the beach, clothed at the beach, um, and she was like it was like a like a kind of like one of those like. Like don't don't take the photo mm, kind of thing. With like, the oh, I was like candid, right? Yeah. She goes, how many times? How many photos? Do you, like, because it looks like it just got taken, and she, and she chose that photo. She goes, how many times do you think this photo was taken? It was like four thousand photos. <laughs> no way. She, she said this. We took this four thousand times to get the right photo, oh, but wow. the whole image is the most candid. Like, oh my god, like you know, her makeup's like natural. The sun's just gl- glistening, and it just happened to be the perfect timing. Mm. Like, that's the extent of of how social media is where every little thing is fake i've seen personally you know girls edit edit their their every part of their face their body their nose they don't even look like themselves and it's mm. it's and it's understandable mm. it's understandable i'm not saying it's right but it's understandable cuz everyone these days is fake yeah. and everyone wants to look better and it's just everyone's comparing and it goes i think back to you. i think it's very unnatural i think it's 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 uh it's very sad um and it's it's going to get worse and worse if if you know people don't become uh more confident in themselves and and find value in other things and just their appearance and and what other people think mm. hopefully what? there were some practical things that people can implement like straight away hopefully we gave you a few tips to one grow your social media and then on the other side if it's controlling you break away from it so that's wow. it oh. all right, all right. Bye. that's a wrap <laughs>